can Google detect right sonic content? Uh, so that's what we're going to look at. Uh, do a quick kind of study here using the tool originality.ai to determine if we're able to uh, effectively predict uh, what content has been created by originality.ai. Um, so who am I? Um, name's John Gillum. I've built and sold um, a bunch of content sites. Uh, recently, a content agency uh, we built and sold that was heavily um, built off the back of creating AI content. Uh, we were the largest user of uh, Jasper um, for, for a long period of time. Um, and then recently, we've built our own AI um, at originality.ai to be able to predict if content has been created by any of the popular uh, tools that use OpenAI's GPT-3. So we're the world's first GPT-3 trained AI detection tool, uh, which is which is pretty neat. Um, and just what that means is, you know, can we can we identify content that has been created by one of these AI tools? And then it's also uh, a plagiarism uh, checker built for sort of serious web publishers, not not students. Um, yeah, so WriteSonics is an AI writing tool uh, that uses GPT-3. Uh, we talked about originality to AI, and we're going to work through a series of steps here to see get content created by WriteSonic Live, and then go and check it to see if the uh, AI at originality.ai uh, is able to predict it. So why do we care? Why do we care if um, you know the genie's out of the bottle? Why do we care if content is able to be uh, identified as as AI content. Um, so Google has certainly come out um, with a fairly negative stance towards AI content. Um, you know they want the web to be as useful, helpful a place as possible, and a bunch of proliferated spam AI generated nonsense is not in line with with that. Um, they'll they'll lose money. Um, that's not what they want. They'll, people will go to other uh, methods for finding their information if they can't trust the internet. Um, so that, you know, Google, Google doesn't want that to happen. So they've certainly come out with strong wording against AI, but then have also left enough room to say, um, AI, if human edited and useful, still good. So, um, AI works, it's easy. Um, you know, there's, there's certainly a lot of reasons why us marketers, um, like the tools. Um, you know, here's a tool, website that's had nice growth of, that's in my portfolio that we've been pushing a lot of AI content at. So let's go and look at um, running a bit of a, a live a live study here. So we're going to go to WriteSonic, create some pieces of content based on this set of set of keywords, and then run those through originality.ai live to see if it's able to detect if that content was was produced by AI. Um, all right, so here's the right Sonic backend. A couple things on right Sonic. Um, so this is a bit of a review of right Sonic as well, but it's currently our favorite tool. We've used a lot of tools. Um, I think pretty much all the popular ones. Um, right Sonic has done a lot of work to focus on producing um, longer form content that stays reasonably focused. So we find it better than than Jasper for for creating this content. Certainly better than some of the other less expensive tools. Um, and the ease of use is, as you can see, is pretty outrageous. Um, just what is WriteSonic? Run it, and it'll come and grab a uh, a, a chunk of uh, a chunk of words. Um, and so it it does. One of the downsides to write Sonic is it's a touch slower. Um, so to get a little bit geeky, and I don't know this for sure, but GPT-3 has several different layers, um, and each of those layers have a different cost and speed um, when you're with which API you're calling. My guess, and I don't know if write Sonic's come out and said this, but my guess is if you're using the premium um, uh, quality type setting, then it's likely connecting into the DaVinci um, layer at GPT-3, which is produces a much a much better piece of piece of content than some of the the most basic um, ones. Um, so let's go grab this piece of content, um, and here's the article. Did sometimes sometimes WriteSonic will do this where the formatting will get all messed up and it'll just turn into one big block of text, which isn't. Great. Yeah, usually it's 
nicely structured with subheadings um, and a good spot for a human editor to come in and start. So let's uh, scan this now and see what we get. So uh, yeah, as mentioned, originality AI is an AI that's been trained to predict whether or not content was generated um, by any of these GPT-3 related tools. Um, it's also a plagiarism checker uh, that has some added functionality that um, web publishers care for, such as ability to add team members, um, ability to have a dashboard, scan history, uh, auto renewal on credits. Um, so kind of about what we'd expect, um, it successfully determined that that was AI generated content, um, found no plagiarism because it was a, a, a recently created piece of content by the AI tool. Um, and so, you know, originally AI kind of nailed it here where it said that, yep, this is probably AI content and uh, not plagiarized. And certainly if, if kind of we can, we can achieve that, um, you know, you pretty high confidence that, that Google and their much bigger brains are able to achieve that as well. So I'm going to make a post, um, about this to, so that people can share, see, the, see all these rights on examples. Um, and so I'll drop a link in the description below um, for that, but we're going to keep going here and, and move on to the, the, the next one. We'll do one more here live and then uh, we'll pause this while I go and uh, finish up the rest of the articles and then come back and give a, an overview. Uh, hopefully, hopefully on this one you'll get to see kind of how Sonic will often have things properly properly formatted to make it a much, so it, it can be a, yeah, it, it's become the team's favorite tool to use. Um, there's some other functionality that we like in Writesonic where you can add team members um, to it. Um, so that's, that's nice to be able to do, not have multiple accounts. Um, and uh, yeah, that's probably the one of that. And then the, the quality of the size of the articles where a lot of other tools, when you try and get a bigger article, it just feels like you're going in circles and achieving no new knowledge. Whereas Writesonic sort of focus on this nice structuring of exactly like this, the, the headings um, usually keeps it uh, all, all quality, um, all quality content. Doesn't always mean that it's accurate and publishable, able to be published, but uh, it's, uh, it's, it's a usually a good starting point for the writers. They definitely can be far more productive with uh, a starting article like this. All right, so we're gonna run this one through. Um, while it's doing that, I'll show you around. You've got to the dashboard to be able to add your team members. You can see who, who's been working, um, status and credits and FAQ, and then your account where you can modify your uh, your um, all right, so this was, uh, this is the, the scan results page. Um, so we found one, there was one instance of plagiarism here. Um, and this, and again, predicted at 99% accuracy that, or 99% probability that, uh, it was AI. It doesn't always hit 99%. Um, this is a typically like a, uh, you, I think of it like a, a weather forecast, like probability of rain. Um, good chance to bring an umbrella if it's, if it's saying 99% chance of rain, um, but it's not always the case. So sometimes it'll be 50-50, sometimes it'll miss. Sometimes we'll absolutely create a piece of content using uh, an AI tool, but the results will not uh, demonstrate any AI. Um, so uh, I'm gonna keep moving here with, uh, with running through the rest of these. And then I'll summarize what the score was for each, and we'll come back and be able to answer whether or not we think Google uh, is able to determine if rights on it content was was created. All right, so we have uh, finished creating all those examples uh, using a right Sonic and then running them all through originality.ai. Um, so I'll have in the description, like I said, a post that will have um, each of these. Uh, each of these examples so you can read through it and have a look at how Writesonic did. 
Um, but what's interesting is the scoring that originality.ai delivered was um, near 100% across the board that um, everything that writes on it produced, originality.ai was able to successfully predict with a high level of confidence that it had been generated by, by a bot. Um, and so, you know, again, what do you do with this information? Um, you know, do you not publish content that's been produced by AI that shows up as AI? You know, I think everyone needs to make that own their their own decision around that. I think that's a blanketly applying that would be a mistake. Um, however, if you're paying writers to produce content for you and it's coming back as consistently uh, very likely been produced by AI, um, that's potentially not what you're what you what you thought what you wanted to be paying for. So. Um, yeah, really interesting, um, useful tool for, for us web publishers. Um, and I think it also really does answer the question of whether or not Google will be able to detect um, AI generated content and some question whether or not GPT-3 content would be able to be predicted. Um, I think clearly if we are capable of creating an, an AI that can detect it with this level of accuracy, then there's a pretty good chance that uh, Google's got something a lot better than than what we've got. But this is the you know the the world's the world's first and currently only uh, GPT three trained AI predictor of, of content. Um, so yeah, have a have a play with it. Um, I'll I'll leave some uh, some details in the description on, on how you can get access. But uh, yeah, it's, I think it's a pretty pretty interesting tool um, in this sort of arms race of AI content creation. All right, take care. Hope you enjoyed it.